Hey guys, it's Ren from Kindred Acres. So um, I wanted to do a video today to show you how we save seeds on our heirloom squash plants. Now if you are growing multiple varieties of squash, there's a chance that they can cross pollinate with each other. And then when you go to plant those seeds next year, you might not get what you think you're going to get. So there's some techniques that you can use to make sure that the seeds stay true to seed and you can preserve those beautiful heirloom squash. We use what's called the bag method. Now there's multiple options here. I'm just going to show you the simplest one and the one that we use here. Um, so to do that, you'll need to get those, uh, those white mesh bags that you use for weddings. They often put the little candies in them. You can usually find them at like Michael's or Target, um, Walmart, um, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, any of those like craft stores that have, or you know, big box stores that have like a little craft section in them. Um, you can also use pantyhose and just tie one end, but I just find it easier to use the mesh bags. And I'll show you what those look like, look like in just a moment. Now, before I go outside, it's very windy out there. That's why I'm doing the intro inside today. Um, so I'll do my best to keep the camera steady and speak as clearly as possible. I want to give you as much info now before we head out as possible so that I can ensure that you can hear me. Um, so I want to tell you real quick about the differences in flowers. Now, some plants will have... A male and separate male flower and a separate female flower and some plants will have male and female parts all in one flower for example tomatoes and peppers they all have male and female flowers all in um, sorry male and female parts all in one flower they don't have separate male flowers and separate female flowers whereas pumpkins any squash for that matter and watermelons for example they would have a female flower and a male flower and it's important to be able to identify the difference between the two. So I'm going to show you how to do that. That way you can easily uh, save your seeds and make sure that you're preserving those beautiful heirlooms. Okay, so we're outside. Again, I apologize if it's too windy, but I was really motivated to get this done. And I've had quite a few of you asking this question. So I guess, you know, it's time. Anyway, so what you want to look for is uh, you want to look for a plant that's very healthy. Uh, you don't want a plant that's got pest issues, disease issues, anything like that. As you can see, this plant's nice color. It's not wilty, even though it's like almost 100 today. <laughs> I might be exaggerating a little, but it's in the 90s, I believe. It's pretty hot. Um, it's a healthy plant. It's got loads of blooms and um, fruits on it. So this is the type of plant that you would want to save seeds from. Now, remember I was telling you about those bags. This is it. So hang on one second. I'm going to have Kalia hold, take over the camera. Okay. Okay, got it. Downward a little bit. There oh, we go. Over. Yeah, there we go. So these are the bags. Now, they're the, the mesh, like, favor bags that you get. Am I too close? Here. Better? Yeah. So there's these mesh favor bags that you get at, like, uh, Walmart. And they have the little slips on them. This is what I like to use because it makes it super easy. Okay, and so it's like, I don't know, two, three dollars at most and you get a bag of 30. So, worth it. Okay, so remember I was talking about the male and female flowers. I'm going to show you in here, over this way, honey. Okay, now this is how you could tell the difference. This here is a female flower. Are you able to see that? Yep. Okay, so you see how you see the flower and directly behind the flower is the ovary or the fruit and it, it follows along to the vine. This would be a female flower. Think flower and ovary female, right? Now I'm going to show you what a male flower looks like. We have one over here. I think right over here, honey. So you have the flower, no ovary behind it, just the stem. This is a male flower. That's how you could tell the difference. You want to look for... Uh, a, a flower, oh, well, I just pulled that one off. Let's go find another healthy one. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna hunt over, let's go on the back side, because I think these are mostly females over on that side here. Here's a female. Lots of female blooms, here we go. We've got a couple of male blooms here. There you go, right here. Oh. All right, so let me get in here. Hang on with me, guys. All right, there we go, there's a good one. That's a nice, let's see here, if I can manage to get in here. 
Okay, so here's a good male flower. It's young, it's not, not been opened, you can tell, and you've got just the flower followed along, no ovary, just stem. That's a male flower. And you see how tightly closed this still is? This would be a good one to bag right now. So you can bag this flower, and then something's going on in my chicken coop. And then uh, you would flag, uh, bag a young female flower. Now, I wouldn't... Can you take over this? Because I'm having a hard time focusing and getting two hands here. Okay. All right. Can you see? Yep. Okay. I wouldn't bag this one because you can see here that the flower's already been opened. So there's already probably been bees and pollinators in this one. So there's who knows what kind of pollen in it. It could be pollen from any one of these plants around. Um, so what we want to find is a nice, cl tightly closed flower. Um, and so let's go see if we can hunt one down. I found one over here. You did? Okay. Okay, we interrupt the programming to provide you a, a really cool view of one of my favorite creatures, an assassin bug. So if you see this guy, do not harm him. He's a good guy. He's eating all of those baby squash bugs and the eggs and keeping your plants healthy and clean. Yep. <laughs> now they do pack a potent bite, so just be careful not to get close to him. Give him his space and he'll do his job to keep your plant healthy. Okay, so back to it. Okay, so we searched and searched and unfortunately we do not have a young female flower that's still closed. So um, thankfully I have bagged this one already that's why I've got this tied because so what you do is basically I'm just gonna give you an example anyway uh, we'll show you on this one over here even though uh, this wouldn't be one we would bag because um, like I said it's already been opened um, so what you do is just take your bag out and again you want to find a nice tightly closed flower not one that's been open um, and then you just gen be gentle. You don't want it to fall off like I showed you on the other one. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. So go ahead and get the bag around the flower and pull it as close as, as tight as you can. You want to pull it as tight as you can, but without pulling so tight that you're going to restrict or damage the flower. So um, just pull it good and snug and just let that sit. Now you're going to do that bag on one uh, tightly closed female flower and at least one if not two tightly closed male flowers. Now another thing you want to think about is you want to find a male flower that's close in size like that looks like it's about ready um, so you know that this flower is going to be opening up any day now and ready to be used so you wouldn't go and find say a male flower that's that's this young obviously because this isn't going to be ready to open in quite a few days and then what's going to end up happening is this blossom is going to end up falling off and the fruit's not going to have uh, it's not going to have been pollinated so you're not going to get any fruit off of it so you want to find one that's very close in size that's close to opening but has not yet opened it's still tightly closed those are the ones that you want to bag Okay, so now after you've bagged it, let's pretend this was a nice tightly closed one because I'm just going to give you an example today and show you what to do. Okay, so we've waited a day or two. Now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to get my male flower. Where did he go? Let's see. Uh, oh. Okay, you take this. Can you see? All right, so we're going to get our nearly open male flower. Where was that? Was that on the other side? Okay. So you pinch the blossom off, okay? This was my male flower. Now you're going to open the petals gently, carefully. Pull this back. And you expose the stamen, which is where all the pollen is. So you don't want to touch that. You want to be very gentle because you don't want the pollen to rub off. You need that pollen. Now, you're going to take this and you're going to come back over to your female flower. Now again, remember, these have been bagged for a day or two, hypothetically. Um, 
and so they had not opened, no bugs have gotten into the flower to pollinate them. So we're going to gently open. Wait. Here, give me. Okay. Go. We're going to gently open the flower. Try not to break the flower. In this case, the flower is a little old, so, old, so it's not crisp. And we're going to expose the inside of that flower. We're going to take the pollen and gently rub it around in there. Can you see well? I'm trying to get you a finger. Move your finger, honey. Sorry. Okay. So you're going to take this and just gently rub it around in there and make sure that you get the whole all over in there. And just keep rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. Okay. And then once you're done, you don't need this part anymore. You can toss it, give it to your chickens, eat it, whatever. But then what you're going to do now, now this has the pollen in it that you wanted. You know that that's true pollen because you took it from a male flower that had not been open, that no bugs got to. So you're going to need to rebag this. So put the bag back on the flower. And close it up gently without you don't want to pinch it so tight that the blossom falls off now the reason you're doing that that's good enough is to make sure that now that that's pollinated with the pollen that you know is true no other bug comes in there after you've already done your job we don't want another bee to come in with a different type of pollen and poll add, add pollen to what you've already done so now this has been pollinated with the proper stuff. We're going to end up taking this bag off when we're done with the video because we know that those were not true flowers. Um, they were open and there's a chance that a bug could have gotten in there. But in this case we're saying hypothetically um, we're pretending that those were closed. Now in this case this one I had already done properly and so once the bloom dries up like this and you know the fruits are starting to get bigger and it, you know it was pollinated you can go ahead and take the bag off and either tie the bag to the stem here or tie a ribbon of some sort to the stem so that you remember when you come out to harvest that this was the one that you pollinated yourself and that this one is true to seed. Now this fruit right here will have true seeds for you to save and use later on. Okay, so that is, how, now this method will work for any plant that has a male and female flower. That goes true for, let's say, for example, cucumbers. Uh, this is one of those, I'm going to go to the other side, please, excuse me. This is one of those yard-long cucumbers, Yamato yard-long cucumber. And you can see here that we've got, let's see here, let's see if we can hunt for a female. Lots of male flowers. Not so many female flowers on this one. Uh, all right, let's go over here. Okay, so you can see that we've got male flower, just flower and stem, no ovary behind it. And then... Is this a female right here? Nope. It's just the flower and stem, right? Then this would be a female flower. Let me, I can't. Okay, so you see how there's a flower and then a, an ovary behind it, or a fruit, that's much thicker than, say, this one. I can't see where I'm aiming here. Okay, that has the flower and then just the stem behind it, and no ovary, compared to the one that has this one right here. the flower with the ovary behind it. And that works with watermelons too. So, let's see. Watermelon flower would be flower with just stem. So, this would be what, Kalia? Female. No. I mean, male. Male, because there's no ovary behind it, right? And so, then to find a female flower, we're going to look for a flower that has an ovary behind it. Can you hunt for one and show me once you've found one? Oop, I think I found one. Oh, that one's already been pollinated. 
and the ovary fell off, so that one's not going to work. Let's see here. Uh, I don't see any more on here other than the ones that have already been pollinated and fruited. Uh, but you get the concept. So it works the same for any plant that has separate male and separate female flowers. You can use that bag method. So I hope that helps you to understand how you can successfully save seeds when you have multiple varieties growing and ensure that your seeds are true to uh, what they're supposed to be. Anyhow, so, well, thank you so much for watching with lots of love from Kindred Acres. Bye.